Hi all, uh, I'm Nahima Ahmed. I'm the manager of impact strategy at Science Friday. Uh, folks also call me Ima. I use she, her pronouns. Um, if you have a chance to put it in your um, name, that'd be great. If not, you can also state them when you, um, if you want to talk. Um, so I, like I mentioned, I'm the manager of impact strategy at Science Friday. We're a multimedia nonprofit organization and a lot of folks know us through our public radio organization, but we do all sorts of stuff. Um, and I just want to give first a little bit of a round robin to my colleagues as well. So I'll let, uh, other folks take race, so I'll just ping someone. Um, Ariel, you want to gonna give yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Ariel Zich. I'm Science Friday's Education Director. I use the she, her pronouns. I'm based here in Pittsburgh, um, and I'm so excited to be here and stoked about how many of you all are joining us today. Uh, so take it away. Hi, my name is Sochi Garcia, and I'm the Education Program Manager for K-12 through at Science Friday, and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm going to toss it to Diana. Hello, I am Diana Montano. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I am the outreach manager for Science Friday, which basically means I help my colleagues make their work happen and also design events, um, kind of like what we're doing today and a little bit about what we're going to be talking about uh, through our session today. So excited to be here. Thanks for inviting us to be here. Um, thanks all for, for joining. We're really excited to have you. If you haven't had a chance, please you know put your name. Um, in the chat and kind of where you're calling in from, and uh, maybe even your organization. So we know who's kind of around. Um, we're really excited to kind of talk to you about the work that we've been doing. Like Diana mentioned, um, we do a lot of different types of things. And as you can see, just from the four of us, we have very different roles here. Um, and so what we're gonna be talking a lot is on our Breakthrough Portraits of Women series, which is uh, a video series that we had that talks about just that, women in STEM. Um, and so that's what we kind of did. And we had a whole pro kind of thing about our program and design. We'll go through, um, a little bit of a PowerPoint with the evaluation portion of it, um, and then kind of go through what our our programming looked like. So you guys get a taste of um, how we use media and incorporate it into our education programming and our and our research programming. Um, so I'm gonna present my screen if I have the ability to do so now. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, so we're talking about this is friend. I know check yourself is a little bit, <laughs> but if anybody has watched Parks and Recs, it's a kind of a play on treat yourself because it is about, you know, treating yourself is about being kind to yourself. And this work is checking your unconscious biases. So it is about treating yourself, making sure you're kind to yourself. And also how do we think about those kind of delays? And so um, think about that when we want to think about identifying community strategies, because it's a lot of like grueling work, but it's also good, ex um, exciting work. And uh, the work that we were doing kind of thinking about how does he use media in that way? And so, Ema, just sorry to interrupt. The um, I think the chat might be obscuring part of the presentations. So you just want to make sure that there's nothing in front of it. Perfect. We can see it now. Oh, perfect. Sorry about that. Is this better? No. First. Yeah, we're 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 still seeing all of that Zoom stuff on top of that. Zoom. I know it's my favorite part about Zoom. Yeah. There That's, you go. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. Uh... Okay, perfect. Sorry. So, um, <laughs> thanks all. Um, so when we were talking about um, a little bit of this work, sorry, I think I'm having some issues with my computer as well. Is this better or worse? That looks great, Ima. Okay, sorry. Um, so just kind of thinking about like, we're going to go a little bit of background of like what Science Friday is, um, what the breakthrough program design was, some of the kind of research questions that I had and so the, and the team, um, the results from the evaluation, some of the takeaways, and we're going to do a little bit of a, a uh, a sample breakout session. Some of the events that um, uh, Diana was mentioning is, is how we kind of will go through this. Um, just so a little bit about SciFry, we are a multimedia organization. So we have about 1.8 million listeners. We've been on the air for 30 years in November. Um, and so in addition to our podcast, uh, our radio show that gets turned into a podcast, we have original storytelling podcast, we have live events, we have education programming, um, awesome social media and like research and evaluation. And what we really are thinking about is um, increasing the access to science and scientific information for the public and for Team Educate, which is a team that all of us are on, it's really thinking about how can we think about people's confidence, people's interests, and really participation and building that equity in STEM, that building that inclusive in STEM um, as much as we can. You know, we want people to be able to say, I can do this just like you can do this. Um, and so that we kind of took that lens into like the media that we did with Breakthrough, but also the programming that we did. Um, and kind of what that looked like. So we had a lot of different programming um, from a lot of different areas. Uh, so Diana and Ariel did a lot of 
thing than, than I did. And um, same thing with Soshi, but with Diana did a lot of work in like these wonderful events, like with Black and Neuro, um, as well as 500 women scientists doing these kind of live events, using media, doing these watch parties, um, really engaging um, an online community uh, with that. As um, and, and in addition to that, um, we worked on workshop series, which looked at like on campuses and affinity groups, thinking about um, the toolkit. And we, in addition to the media that we have, we have about, um, there are, sorry, six episodes in season two of Breakthrough which um, we will show a little bit of a clip of it so you can um, kind of get a taste of it as well. We had the Inclusive Action Toolkit, which is a research back strategy document uh, that we developed and we're still in the process of iterating. And the work that we're actually gonna be doing today will help us um, reinform that iteration because we want that to be a tool that people can use, but we want that tool that people can be informed by the community that we have. Um, and then I kind of worked on what we'll present on is the focus group and evaluations and we've done evaluation in a couple of different levels. And what we wanted to do is look at um, really how folks in that kind of age group of um, that college age group um, and thinking about how can we use this media to think about this course in STEM. Um, so we'll give you a little bit of a taste of the video. Um, and so this is from the Galaxy Hunter, which is from Dr. Bertrand Tukali, and she is um, an astrophysicist. We'll just give you a little taste of like some of the things that um, Breakthrough kind of just talks about in her science. I uh, did my undergrad degree in Ankara, capital city of Turkey. And the first day I met with one of the faculty members and he basically said, you are women and you are planning to study physics. Are you sure? Are you crazy? He basically challenged me with this question and I, I didn't know how to react. I kept going, but it was so challenging. And then um, so that was just a, a little bit of a taste of like what the kind of um, the videos were like themselves. I uh, did my undergrad degree. Um, and so what we did is we wanted to kind of think about how can we use media to kind of talk about norms, um, really talk about cultural norm experience of different communities um, when just facilitating discussions um, on campus, so this, as well as can these videos be really used as a tool to encourage uh, folks to pursue uh, and persist in a career in STEM because we know that that's a big way to build equity, right? And so can media be, be used to do this? Can we facilitate discussion? Can we think about um, different careers? Um, and so what we did is we had a target audience of people 18 to 24 and so um, who had never seen the study and so they had to either be women or non-binary people because we only want to like focus on um, kind of gender equity and um, so, you know, that's a read in English and that's an interconnectivity connectivity and intentionally we had a design of putting into our research um, at least 50% of the seats to try to be for BIPOC folks because we know that there's under representation oftentimes in research studies so kind of as much as we can targeting different ways to think about can we fill up at least 50% with with people who identify as black indigenous and, and people of color. Um, so what we did a little bit is we had a, a mixed method designed and what that looked like is. Uh, folks took a pre-survey, they never saw any of the breakthrough series, uh, did two focus groups uh, sessions where they watched the entire season and we did that intentionally so that um, there's one narrative style, there was uh, season two and so it's like that style was a little bit different than in season one so we want to make it consistent as possible. And the order was randomized so that you know we don't have any issues around um, bias around the order of the, the episodes themselves. Uh, and then after they took that they took um, surveys that kind of asked them about like their behaviors their perceptions and wherever we could we use validated measures so we can kind of see all right are these things that we can really kind of test out um in the future uh, they were given 50 dollar gift cards um for them and about and we had a the analysis uh, was from a subsample of 25 uh, 25 of the videos sessions so what we kind of did um who who, who showed up um to our sessions and when we looked at it, about 40, just under 40% identified as non-Hispanic or white. So we were able to achieve our at least 50% mark, which was great, like getting folks in there. Um, after that, we kind of see the folks who identified as Hispanic or Latinx um, at 27%. As we, because it's, you know, geared towards women and non-binary folks, it's expected that that would be our things, um, higher percentage of folks. So 90, about 90, just under 94% um, were identified as female. Uh, and a third of them, um, of just under a third, had less than 50% of a household, uh, $50,000 for their household income, um, and has some college because that is that age group. This is 
this is interesting for us because this is actually very different than what we often think of our typical Science Friday audience or our public radio audience, which is usually an older demographic, a little bit wider, a little bit more uh, wealthy of like 100K. And so, so this is a very new audience that even from different from the, the usual Science Friday audience. Um, and how we kind of got folks here was um, through different avenues. The number one way was through Facebook ads, which was great. Um, and it was interesting because uh, when we looked at this, when we asked about engagements, 66% of folks had actually never heard of or never engaged with Science Friday before this. And so this is a really great way to think about how can our media be in a, in a pretty new audience. Um, and so some of the feedback that we got in terms of narrative content is really thinking about this isn't the kind of media I've seen around male scientists. Women have to dig into their personal lives and feel, but it makes me feel like that's the interesting to understand those implications. And what that really means is that's an interesting story when talking about narrative storytelling, because how do we talk about these things if we're talking about them differently? Should we be talking about men the same way, like showing them option or non-binary folks? Like, is this narrative storytelling should be for everybody and not just for women? Because it's really talking about what are the adversities that are facing? What are the issues that you're rising to and in terms of more content um getting more representation of people of marginalized groups is something that folks are really interested in like women who are lost in science and gender career representation matters is, is what folks are trying to say basically um so kind of answering our research questions of what can we learn about cultural norms and experiences of different communities we asked a lot of folks about what are some of the barriers and what are some of the challenges when we're thinking about inclusive stem you know and whose job is it those kinds of things um so when we asked about some of the barriers, there was a lot of different things, but these these really struck out um, burnout and burden of color, um, burden for for uh, women and students of color, and thinking about you know is that burden on people of color to have to kind of educate those who are or um, uh, who are you know white who are white identifying or thinking about it from a LGP perspective, thinking who are, who are cisgendered, um, that burnout and that burden is on the folks who are kind of in that marginalized community. Um, when we're thinking about norms and expectations about women, um, one one individual talked about like in highlighted like South Asian communities, you know, it's very different between men and women. So that intersectionality, of, like, it's not just a gender, it's a where are your larger cultural perspectives um, that's kind of facing those those issues that you have. Um, and an interesting one for me was that negative motivation of like, uh, one of us, like if I find somebody else who is also like me, I'm going to work extra hard because I know that that person is going to have my back and I know that like I'm going to have to work extra hard, but that's going to make me want to do it more. And so, yes, that's both the barrier, but it's also like that motivating factor for that person. Um, and so we think about motivation and how can we actually think about activations and um, intentional platforms and these spaces. Inclusive SciComm is a wonderful example of intentional spaces, right, as, as much as we can. Um, and some and we'll do that a little bit work building. Um, what we see in the breakout sessions I will do later today. Um, thinking about mentorship, right? That was something that came up over and over again. Um, and this person specifically talked about, um, there was a lot of mentorship in terms of on the college campus, at, you know, as a, as a postdoc in the careers, but also for folks who are in the non-STEM field who want to do informal education, right? Like who want to do it in their own personal lives, thinking about that support and that mentorship as well. And then just money right we all need money for different things like <laughs> whether it's books or their spaces we just need funding to like put your money where your mouth is um when we're thinking about inclusive building inclusion on, on campuses um and then can we think about how the films can they be used to encourage and pursue a career in stem um so these are from the pre and post surveys that we did the purple one is the pre-survey and the uh the gray one is uh, the post survey and so we asked them just kind of um one how they looked up any information in stem as you can see it's kind of even you know both but it's really interesting to see that uh a lot of folks can actually see themselves now in stem so from 64 to 82 percent that's that's a pretty big spike um you know this might be that they are already have an interest in stem but that that spike is nice um to see that that had happened and it, uh, additionally with the intention to pursue a, a career in stem so that kind of makes us think, all right, well, it's getting people talking, seeing that representation, seeing those kind of folks that might be a good way to think about, all right, I can do this just as, as well as those other folks can. And um, we, this is not actually statistically significant. This is just kind of, we just want to see, is there a difference? We didn't actually test for significance, mostly just to see, are there perception changes? Um, but we did actually, we did look at, um, were there changes from pre and post surveys? And this was through a validated measure, um, which is the, 
the instrument, um, <coughs> sorry, the, the STEM semantic survey. Um, and what we kind of found in, in a couple of areas that there was significance, and that is from pre and post, there was a decrease in the interest in tech and there was an increase in math. And that could be for a lot of reasons. That's interesting, right? Um, it might be that they already have an interest in, um, in STEM. And so that's why there might be an, in, an increase in math. Uh, and in terms of why a decrease in uh, tech, it could be a fluke because that's how statistics works. But it also could be that we're thinking about, they didn't actually think about tech in terms of STEM roles. Not everybody always think of that in that same role, but also we didn't highlight any specific tech roles or none of the, the women that we um, highlighted were in tech roles. And so maybe that could be an influencing factor. Um, and this is really important, especially because for an equity point of view, careers in tech are very lucrative, um, even from a starting you know, BA position. So thinking about that from, are we trying to like, um, you know, be agents of change and and, and uh, level the, the field a little bit more. Um, and then there was no changes in science, engineering or career. And that could just be maybe they're already interested in the, in this topic area anyways. Um, so just some of the limitations that we had, we had a really small sample size, but this was a pilot. We really just want to see, can we do this kind of work? Can this um, be allowed for us to have this course? Um, there was one session that had a repeated video, so just a little bit of repeat exposure. Um, in terms of dropout, uh, 30 people completed both sessions, two people dropped out after a second one, um, and one partially missed. So we have a little bit of like exposure, less, they had a little bit of exposure, less exposure. Um, and then, as always, bias is always a thing in everywhere we go. Um, from those who like in selection bias, those, those who are more likely to be interested in talking about STEM will probably have participated in a study like this and given us their time. Um, but also interview bias, right? I the way I talk about things, the way I handle things, who I select for the study, um, or how I recruit things will also um, limit whether or not like um, things are are affected. Um, and so, just some of the the key takeaways that we have from that is just when we think about storytelling, consider the balancing of story uh, narratives with preparing women for non um, for messages, thinking about representation and identifying opportunities uh, for experts in different fields. Um, when we think about activation, just quality membership and really discourses something we can think about with these videos and these media. Um, and so I'll let uh, Ariel take it a little bit and talk about um, being an agent uh, of change. Awesome. So, um, and I just want to elevate um, <laughs> that um, that some of these findings um, have been um, totally uh, mirrored in the conversation in the chat. So um, Sabrina, thanks for sharing um, that quote or the paraphrasing um, from Canther's work in the 70s, um, that maybe we don't need to be inspired more, maybe we need help opening doors. Um, so this idea that um, some of, you know, these films were, they, they did something, right? But maybe they aren't these, like media isn't a turnkey um, around inclusive STEM culture. Um, and that's part of why in our second season of producing them, we really pivoted hard to using these films as um, a, a Trojan horse um, for instigating dialogue. Um, so we said, okay, why can't, can we um, use this? <laughs> Thank you, Sabrina, I appreciate that. Um, but like, can we use these, these films as a way of like sort of nestling in and sneaking in conversations that maybe are a little more constructive um, and a little more direct about um, issues of inclusion? And so what we wanted to do today was um, kind of take you through a sample of what um, a follow-on workshop or discussion or panel um, would look like and or has looked like. And we've done all of those because we build these in response to the needs um, or the interests of either um, large national organizations of shared interests or affinity groups, individual departments um, or individual initiatives that are maybe multi-institutional. Um, and we ask them, we say, hey, like we've got some themes that we've pulled together in this toolkit can we, do you want to take a look and see which of these sort of themes of building an inclusive STEM culture um, you want to tackle? Um, and so the breakthrough kit, um, and I just want to point this out, this is all free to access online. And um, I think like the, um, I, I want to just reemphasize a couple of things here. So first it's fully cited, like go bibliography hunting, that's awesome. Um, it's all fully free to access. We ask you to, um, give us your email just so we can tell <laughs> that it's going out the door, which is great, um, helps us understand our impact and interest. Um, but the other thing I'll say, um, and Diana just uh, dropped the link to the toolkit in the chat, 
The other thing I'll say is that this toolkit, um, we realized very early on in the process, though not early enough, um, that we wanted to make this iterative because um, the speed of the discussion is changing so quickly that creating um, uh, essentially a fixed document is inappropriate, especially around issues um, of equity and inclusion in STEM. So um, what I'll say too, um, and we just lost, oh, there you go, perfect. Um, so what we're going to do next um, is really just like a sample, um, like a like a minuscule taste of what um, one of these discussions has looked like. This is not a good representation because you all didn't um, seed us with the thing you most wanted to talk about in advance. It's also going to be super short. So it's just going to be like one question instead of like five, and it's going to be like 10 minutes instead of 60 to 120 minutes. Um, but we're going to try to show you some of the, um, the tools. I also want to point out, too, that we've got some of our um, co-facilitators who are joining us, who um, we met at this symposium like two years ago, and also who have been really helpful in this work. Um, and then the third thing I'll point out is that when we start doing this, and we're going to try a little breakout um, work together today to model this activity, all of that breakout work is going to abide by our norms, which, it, which is that we're not going to record anything. So um, feel free to um, participate as generously as you're able, and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's say that you all said, hey, weed out culture is a huge issue at our institution. We really want to kind of tackle what that is and start to address these incredible disparities in past rates, particularly among um, first generation college students or students of color or women or um, students from out of state, et cetera. And so we would, we would start with some a convening, all of it's been virtual and we would say, cool, let's do some like basic weed out 101. Um, and so we might start with the definition. If you've ever been in a class where someone said, look to your left, look to your right, one of you won't graduate. That's super messed up. <laughs> That mindset that not all students in an introductory course will make it, or worse, the expectation if it's stated explicitly that students need to be weeded out is very problematic. That's weed out culture. If it's insinuated, if it's implied, or if it's um, super surreptitious, and it's just like, well, yeah, like 30% of them don't pass, that's normal, like that's messed up. It's an introductory class, the goal is to teach people. <laughs> um, next slide. The impact of weed out is serious. So the other thing, when we arrive in like a, you know, if we're, if we're doing this workshop for a department or something, um, we're gonna have mixed levels of literacy or awareness around these issues before we start. Um, and so we might need to do really one-on-one -on -one stuff like saying, hey, weed out, weed out culture, this idea that some students just aren't supposed to pass is really problematic because it disproportionately punishes students of color and first-generation college students. And that's extremely well-documented. And then just in case there's some really sticklers, I've used the next slide. And I would say, you might not think that's happening in your school, but um, if you are already, if you're like, think you all are doing a great job and you're super aggressively recruiting students from historically underrepresented groups, and you're claiming all these victories in terms of getting them in the door, but they're not being retained, then you're perpetuating a violent environment and weed out culture is a part of that environment. And then I'll do one more stickler slide. And I'll say, and just in case you think it's you think it's actually effective that weed out culture is actually removing students who don't deserve to be there. Multiple studies have followed students throughout their introductory bio experience throughout their STEM major. And they found that if they are passing, they are as likely or equally likely or more likely than their white or majority white peers um, to pass and to succeed and to graduate. So this is not a different, a fun, any fundamental difference in caliber between different types of students. This is an issue. Um, related to culture and the sense of inclusion in that culture. So um, this is where we are going to move into breakout groups to kind of model this activity. And one of the things that I'd like to say as we go into this space is that, um, yeah, we started out a little didactically, but um, for these workshops, we're going to ask a lot of guiding questions and we're going to ask folks to um, share observations or ideas. Um, even folks who are maybe really behind the eight ball in terms of building inclusive introductory courses, they might have ideas or experiences or observations that are constructive to the process. And as facilitators, our goal is to really like pull those threads to try to generate solutions in advance. So presupposing that weed out culture is an issue, we can work together, all stakeholders, including some that are possibly very problematic, can work together um, to identify 
solutions. So we might come to some of the solutions like what you see on this slide. So prioritizing um, inclusion, um, <laughs> making sure that um, when student, people know that when students feel included, they can succeed. Um, so what we're gonna do um, is we're just gonna start with one of the types of open-ended open questions that we've been facilitating on in this discussion. And we're gonna um, focus on weed out culture. And we're just gonna ask one question. We're gonna break into two breakout groups. Um, and do we, we wanna do norms in breakout groups or do you wanna just go over norms really quickly here? I think we said here. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, see, I see both. Um, can you go back a couple of slides? There you go. All right. So I, I mentioned before the start of this um, session that um, y'all in this conference have some of the best norms I've ever seen. So um, these are the ones we'll be working with today. But of course, we always love suggestions for um, renorming our norms. So um, the first uh, really important one is that stories stay learning sleeve. Um, so we're not going to be recording. All the notes we take are going to be anonymous and unattributed. Um, we're going to try to build something that you all can use later as a result of this. Participate as much as you're able. It's okay if you're like in your pajamas and have um, your hair all weird. Don't have to have your camera on. That's fine. It's Sunday, Saturday. Um, if you want to participate fully, that's great. If you want to just participate in the chat, that's great. If you just want to watch, that's great. Um, share speaking and listening time equitably. I'm not modeling that, but I promise I will once we get into our breakout rooms. <laughs> we honor our own and just humanity. Um, we've all grown a lot in this work. I know that this conference or this symposium tends to grow all of us a lot, and I think we all can continue to grow. So we're going to try to honor that opportunity. Be present and be your most authentic self. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then last, we're going to expect and accept non-closure, particularly because we don't have that much time to do this work. So this is going to be a quick 10-minute jaunt. We're not going to solve this one in 10 minutes. All right, um, Diana, I think you're usually our, our go-to breakout room assigner. Is that fair? 